I never got that whole experience where women have to stay home and cook and do whatever. I never, like how women talk about that. I had a mom that like busted her ass and like worked every, any job she had to, to put food on the plate. Mm -hmm. Like she was a single mom for a little bit and then, um, and then remarried and then saw her in that relationship, which, which was a difficult one. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm really, I think my mom, I don't know about you, but I feel Same. like my, my setup kind of prepared me for this industry. I swear to you, identical. My mom was, yeah. take away the marriage. My mom and my dad yeah. never married. They were together, then they just stopped at like a crazy young age and maybe tampered with the possibility of getting back together. It never happened, my mom kind of shut him out, but my mom was always, you know, a job plus another job mm. plus school trying to further her mind and education. My mom she too. Was, she she was put herself through college. Bop, bop, bop. It bop, wasn't bop, just bop. one. Yeah. And that's not intentional. That was a real. Yeah, that was a good plug, she, though. <laughs> she was always back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. So I do know for a fact yeah. that's where I got my hustle in life from. I think so too. I think, and it's actually an interesting question that I ask people in the industry a lot and like just friends, like if I'm out with, I'm, I don't know, because like, every person I know that's really successful mm -hmm. in the industry, not, I mean, everyone that I personally know, not that this is everyone's story, but I think you've had to experience some kind of grief or loss Absolutely. or struggle or to, to be able to emote hardship. whatever song, to be funny mm -hmm. on stage, to be able to really tap into that. Because I think behind comedy, I don't even know if you know this, but I was a cocktail waitress at a comedy club. That was one of my first jobs. But I, I learned though, it was interesting to see that a lot of comedians very funny, charismatic, bubbly on stage. Dark. Then the club shuts down dark. and we're all counting money, we're doing stuff. And not dark. all of them, but a lot can go dark. And I don't think that they're necessarily going super dark. I think they go quiet because they've had to, you have to give so much energy. Or you cut it on. You yeah. Got, you got to switch. But it's so. like performers. It's the same thing. It mirrors more than you even know. Because, yeah. you know, there's, it's like, it's like the story of the dressing room, right? Yeah. The reason why that dressing room exists is because before a performance, the performer has to have a place where they can go to prepare to cut that thing on. And some people really got to go through a dramatic shift in personality and mood and whatever to go, okay, now I'm ready. Some people don't. Some people can go, some people can entertain, be loose, and then still go and do what they do. But there is a switch in all of us from the person that we are in show and the person that we are mm -hmm. out of show. Yeah. And, and it's learning the balance. I think, you know, for a lot of us, it's about understanding how to navigate correctly with that balance. And I don't know about you, but balance for me, is it, hard. it was a discovery. How, how did you deal with that? Ooh, uh, I hit bottom. And it was from after a performance at Irvine. I hit like a real low. And it was because I didn't know that balance. I didn't know that that room was for me. Mm -hmm. You know, to have my own little space. I always let everybody in. I'm very inclusive. Mm -hmm. I'm um, not great at boundaries. Everybody's pulling. Every, yeah, Everybody's yeah. Pulling. So, and I, and I just didn't know that I could say no. I didn't know. I didn't want to be difficult. I didn't want to be, especially as a woman, like, you know, so I didn't want to be perceived as bitchy or difficult what, or whatever. What age were you at around this time? Is this fairly early in success train? This is Clarkson? like heyday. Yeah, this is And like I think that is, God, I'm such a walking cliche. It's... It is all always in our heyday. It's like it's always where it's always that story of everybody thinks it's hitting and it's going so well and and it's you know knowing how to handle that and especially at 19 like being the boss of grown men and women yeah. around you is like and having to make those decisions and especially being raised that like you respect your elders never say anything other than that Absolutely. like and, and and you can't like tell them what to do definitely so but it was a hard thing yours, to navigate. Yours was like you were truly thrown in it in it like yeah. You, because what started off as an audition, as a shot in a million. Which we thought was a joke. Like, you what know. Do you mean, what do you mean? Which we we thought all was a thought joke. it was kind of a joke. I mean, we didn't think it was gonna come of anything. Like, we were the first season of American Idol. So we, we were there for that paycheck that after a sack gives you to like pay for some bills. Like, you know, nobody knew that it would actually come to, anything would come to fruition. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what everyone hopes, but that doesn't usually happen, you know? So um, I don't know. It, we we got thrown into it. I will say I am thankful for that at the same time mm -hmm. because I think I've skipped the surreal part like of like, it really doesn't matter to me in the best sense. Like it matters, but like it, it matters for what the worth I give it. Like, it. like I love what I do and I mm -hmm. love singing and I love, um, you know, what you're able to do with your spotlight. But I think because I skipped all that so fast and I was thrown in, 
there was no time for people to really drill me on, you have to do this, you have to be this.